What is up? I want to start this video immediately by saying that you can still find the Mark 1. But Boss does not produce it anymore, so it is more and more difficult to find it online. Certain people told me that they still find it online, but I guess that in the near future, it will be simply easier to find it secondhand. But I see this as a good thing in a way because it means it could be cheaper. Now for the Mark II, it is easier to get now. When it was originally released in November, I think it was, it was difficult to get one. Now it's a bit easier and it will be even more simple in the near future. So, which is better for you? Mark one, Mark II. I will try to make this video nice and short and help you maybe in making a decision. But first of all, I want to say that everything I'm about to say is based only on personal experience, personal use of the machines. I am just giving my advice as a looper and in no way making a choice for you. The final decision is only up to you. You have to know what you want. So I'll give you my thoughts on both machines. I've been looping since 2009. I've been looping with the Mark 1 since 2014 or 15, I don't remember exactly. And I am a very recent owner, only over a month, uh, owner of the Mark 2. But I think I know whether the Mark 1 or the Mark 2 is more adapted to certain situations and certain uses. So let's go. So I see different situations here, um, whether you should get a Mark 1 over a Mark 2 or a Mark 2 over a Mark 1. Let's start with the first option. You have discovered loop station recently, perhaps through battles, loop station battles with beatboxers and maybe you beatbox a little bit yourself. So you checked out a few videos and you want to start looping like maybe those GBB loopers you've seen uh, do on stage, but you have never looped before. Well, if you are ready to geek hard and you want to perhaps take part in battles in the future because this is what inspired you, or if you simply want to make music like those GBB loopers are doing, then if you have the budget, go for the Mark II because this machine will become and is already becoming, I reckon, a standard for big major battles like the GBB or any online battle or any battle that will occur in the future years, um, the Mark II is going to be the machine that I guess most people are going to be using. So if you want to be a part of this, the Mark II is what you want to get. Now, if you don't have the budget for the MK2, you have two options, either you really want the Mark II and that's the only thing you want, then I can't say anything else than wait to have the budget. But if you really want to loop, then get the Mark I if you can. Because first of all, <laughs> the Mark I is a very powerful tool. It can do a lot of things and I'm sure you know it because you've probably seen videos uh, with loopers using this machine in very crazy ways. And also because currently there are not many information, tutorials, resources on how to use the Mark II as opposed to the Mark I where you will find a lot, a lot of tutorials, uh, basic setups um, on how to use the machine. You will find even on this channel, there's a lot of tutorials that may help you in, you know, starting with this machine and already doing good stuff. So I think that right now, by getting a Mark I, you will not be disappointed. First of all, you will get it for cheaper. And second of all, you are going to learn faster. Because as I said, there are so many resources, so many tutorials out there that will help you to learn much faster than you can right now with the MK2. And also, the user interface of the MK1 is much easier, much more simple to understand than the one on the Mark II, which is, I must say, not very user-friendly. It's complicated uh, at first to pick up, I must admit. I myself took some time to really learn how to use the machine correctly. So if you really want to take part in battles, but you don't have the budget for a Mark II, go with the Mark I if you can for the moment and learn how to loop, learn how to use the basic functions, the effects, learn how to use the machine because it will be easier when you'll move on to the Mark II. Okay, second situation. You want to start looping because you've heard of this loop station and 
you want to try it out. It's only for leisure, you know, it's only occasional. You want to try it out and see if you like it or not. Well, I'm not really hesitating for this one. Go with the Mark 1. This can do a lot of stuff. This is amazing, an amazing machine that is user friendly. I'm afraid that if you go directly with the Mark 2, you can be discouraged. And I myself, after using this machine, the Mark 1, for seven years, felt a little bit discouraged when I, for the first days, tried out this machine. So I can imagine how it can be for someone who has never used even the Mark 1 for one day. So yeah, if you just want to try out looping, get the Mark 1, see how you feel about looping. If you really want to go deeper, if you feel that you're really passionate about looping, then you could consider moving on later to the Mark 2. But you know, just to begin with, go with the Mark 1. I'd say most people are in these two situations that I've just talked about, but there could be another one where you simply precisely know what you want. You've heard about the specs and features of both machines and you care for things like sound designs, for example. Then I have to say that the Mark II has more to offer in terms of possibilities, sound possibilities compared to the Mark I. If I have to be honest, in terms of simplicity and understanding of the machine, the Mark I is a premium choice. And I personally will keep on using the Mark I for my shows, as it is more organic, if you see what I mean. But if you want to go deeper into sound designs, then the Mark II will also give you this option. The Mark I doesn't. The Mark II is less user-friendly, but once you know how to use it, you will not regret using it over the Mark 1. Simply because the range of possibilities of this machine is, I'm not going to say far beyond what the Mark 1 can do, but beyond what the Mark 1 can do at least. In any other case, what I would say is that it really depends on your motivation right now. When I started looping 13 years ago, I bought a RC50 and a GT10B as my second device. And I was really motivated, so I got good gear for myself. But in 2014, when I saw the GBB battles with the RC505, the Mark 1 that is, I wanted to try it out, but I didn't want to geek so much, to be honest. I just wanted to try out the loop station without thinking that it would actually change my life a few years later. I was simply curious to try it out. So instead of buying the RC505 brand new for, I think it was 500 euro back then, I found a second-hand RC505 for just 250 euro, so half the price that it was selling new. Because I really wanted to see if it's what I wanted to do before buying a new one. And trust me, the second-hand Mark 1 that I bought had some fader issues. But it was okay to start with, and at least I could understand how the machine worked, and it helped me in developing my style on the loop station. So when I wanted to enter my first big competition, my first battle in 2018, this is where I said, okay, this is what I really want to do. This loop is secondhand. It's got some fader issues on it. I need to get something new. I need to invest in a new loop station. And it's only four years later, after I bought my secondhand loop, it's only four years later that I really got serious into it. And then I bought my first mine, uh, my first RC505, and I started working even harder. So it's the same right now for you, except you don't only have one option, you have two options, because there's two loop stations for you right now. So once more, there is the Mark 1, which is easy, very simple to start with, and a cheaper option if you can get it secondhand, and even if you can find it new, it's still gonna be cheaper than the Mark 2. And on the other side, you have the Mark 2, which is, I'm gonna be honest with you, pretty tough to pick up if, if you've never looped before. Um, I mean, the, the looping functions is easy to understand. It's the same as the Mark 1, but the interface itself is complicated, at least more complicated than on a Mark 1. So you may need some time to get used to it and really enjoy it. So if you wanna keep it simple at first and then eventually maybe move up, start with the Mark 1. But if you want more options, Okay, maybe a less user-friendly machine, but more possibilities than get the Mark II. But as I said in the beginning of the video, only you know what machine is good for you. I'm just sharing my experience and my thoughts, only mine, with you, and I'm not taking the decision for you. Um, but I hope this video has been useful. 
and I hope that the Loop Station community will grow and grow and grow and um, yeah, thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you very soon. I'll have some more Loop Station videos coming out soon. Uh, I'm going to do a review also on this machine and some extra reviews also on additional gear that you can get for your Loop Station, especially microphones. And yeah, I'll see you very soon. So uh, see you guys.